Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a summary of a judgment in a case called uh, the Queen on behalf of uh, Athen uh, against the Secretary of State for the Home Department. The appeal is concerned with a challenge by a man called Imran Khan Madmikabal Athan. I hope I pronounced his uh, name correctly, and if I have not, uh, I hope that he will uh, forgive me. In any event, Mr. Pathan's challenge is to a decision by the Home Office to reject his application for leave to remain in the United Kingdom as what is known as a tier two migrant. It isn't necessary for the purposes of this summary to go into detail about what a tier two migrant is. It's enough to say that Mr. Pathan's application was based on the fact that he was employed by a company called Submania Limited. Submania had issued what was called a certificate of sponsorship in support of Mr. Pathan's application. And all seemed set fair for the success uh, of that application. Unfortunately, however, and quite unknown to him, while his application was waiting to be decided, the Home Office revoked Submania's sponsor license. And that automatically invalidated Mr. Pathan's application because he no longer had a certificate of sponsorship. But the Home Office didn't tell him about the revocation. And three months later, his application for leave to remain was rejected. <clears throat> Mr. Bethan sought judicial review. He argued that it was unfair not to alert him to the revocation of Submania's license. And he submitted that if he had learned of this promptly, he might have been able to avoid the serious consequences that it had for him and his family. The application for judicial review was dismissed by the upper tribunal and the court of appeal. In essence, they held that Mr. Mathan's claim raised an issue of substantive rather than procedural unfairness. And that was because, in the estimation of both courts, Mr. Mathan's claim was for a substantial benefit in the form of a period of grace after the decision to refuse his application, uh, during which period of grace uh, he could seek steps to avoid being deported. Mr. Pathan appealed to this court. We have approached the question somewhat differently from the Court of Appeal and the Upper Tribunal. But we have concentrated first on the nature of the duty owed to Mr. Fern, rather than the type of benefit that he stood to obtain. We have unanimously held that the Home Office was under a procedural duty to inform Mr. Bethan about the revocation of Submania's license. Four of us, that is Lord Wilson, Lady Black, Lady Arden, and I, have held that because of that default, the Home Office's decision to reject Mr. Pathan's application cannot stand and must be quashed. The fifth uh, member of the panel, Lord Briggs, although he agrees that there was a breach of the procedural duty to act fairly, considers that this does not justify setting aside the Home Office uh, decision. A majority of us, Lady Black, and Lord Briggs, and I, have concluded that although the Home Office was under a procedural duty to inform Mr. Pathan uh, promptly of the revocation of his sponsor's license, there was no positive obligation to provide a period of time after notification to enable Mr. Pathan to make an alternative application or, or otherwise to react to the revocation of his sponsor's license. That we uh, consider would partake of the conferment of a substantive benefit on Mr. Bethan, which in light of the current state of the law, it could not be uh, recognized. And Lord Wilson and Lady Arden uh, took a different view. They considered that a period after informing Mr. Bethan of the revocation of Submania's license was no more than an aspect of the procedural duty uh, to act fairly. 
whatever of a difference of opinion between the members of the court on the reasons for his success, however, Mr. Bethan has succeeded and his appeal is alive. And that's the end of the summary.